All right. This is something that was been in the back of my mind for a long time. It's really, really different. This is going to be the most different webinar I've ever done in my life since I've been doing this stuff. It's going to be 30 days each day. There's going to be a webinar for the next 30 days. Today is day one. Each webinar will have a different component and we will be talking strictly businesses. There's some businesses that I can break down in one session. Uh, there's some that will take two. So essentially, as we get into this, you'll see how this is going to go. And this is going to be action oriented. Now, let me answer the big question before it's asked. Since this webinar is free, you don't get the replays for free. Uh, that's going to be a special deal. So if you make all of the webinars each day, you'll get the content not holding anything back but if you don't make it <laughs> you have to buy the content if you want it and it's gonna be some awesome awesome stuff so this is the way I run the webinars if you have a question you can just go ahead and put the question in the box and I will get it because typically I don't like using two computers because sometimes there's a lag and I won't miss the questions once I pop open the webinar and I started going through it because like I said this is gonna be really really different it's gonna be some shockers in there so there's a lot of people here that know me there's a lot of people that don't so with that let's jump into it I am so freaking excited all right this is Glendon Cameron and this is 30 days to $2,500 this is gonna be really really different this is gonna be an action based webinar and it's going to be a ton of information and it's going to be fast paced and even today there will be an activity for you so this is watch listen learn and do and it's going to shock some of you so <laughs> be careful what you ask for you may get it so let's just there's a lot of people here that know me and there's a lot of people who've never heard of me they just saw you know thing on youtube and it's like hey why not so essentially, who is that Glendon dude? That's me in the picture, riding around in the vehicle. Essentially, really, really quick, I had a okay life. I had a, you know, was in the military for six years and became a medical laboratory specialist, which allowed me to work in local hospitals and make good money during the recession. Did that, but I always kind of hustled on the side. You know, and my hustle was two and three jobs you know and I, I tried to do some business things and they just blew up in my face I got divorced separated ended up being homeless for a few weeks living in my car then moved to a boarding house one day that's gonna be a hell of a book and just went through a period of 18 months of getting laid off three times my life absolutely sucked big monkey balls I mean it was horrible I didn't couldn't stand myself I was depressed then the third time I got laid off, something shifted in me. And I think that's the day my hustler mindset woke up. That's the day that I just said, I'll figure it out. And I've been figuring it out ever since. I was able to do in about six weeks what I couldn't do in almost three years. Secure a better paying job, get a great crib, get a car, and um, started really living a better life. Now, this is the big, big question. Anytime someone comes online, it's like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. You talk this, you say this. How can you help me? That's the big question, and it's a fair question. This is how I can help you. I have fucked up enough in life for 30 people. Uh, romantically, professionally, business-wise, I have done everything wrong. And with that came a massive learning database. Uh, it's just, you can ask me a question about business. If I don't know, I can find out in 24 hours because even if I don't have the answer, I have enough information to know exactly where to get the answer. Because sometimes you don't even know the right questions that you should be asking, which just keeps you behind. But the number one way that I can help you is impart to you all of this experience and all of these lessons that I had from starting 10 businesses. The first five failed. Five uh, business six through ten, ten being Conundrum Publishing slash now Conundrum Media, have all been successful and they've all been enough to support me and mine in a good lifestyle. And the thing is, all businesses have certain relatable elements. I don't care what you're doing. And we're going to talk about that. So I can give you 
enough information to help you get past that learning curve and not screw yourself and not lose a ton of money. And to be frank with you, even with my information, once you get into certain businesses, there's going to be these, there's going to be your own learning curve after you get this information because everything is different today. Everything is crazy today. And it's wonderful because you can now really do well in a very short period of time, a short period of time being six months to 18 months where you create a business from scratch and you're paying, you're paying the mortgage, you're paying daycare, you're buying carrots and apples for your little kids. This is the world we live in. And it's better, and this is just my opinion, I think even if you have a job, even if the job is good, I think you should still start a side business just in case. Because work as we know it is disappearing. And it's getting harder and harder to find jobs because they're disappearing due to automation. So you have a choice in this matter to actually be ahead of the curve, or you know, like, a, like, a, like I like to say, the big penis in the sky, you could be riding the big penis or the big penis could be riding you. So you have that choice. And if your life is great, wonderful. I still suggest that you start some side hustle, some business, because even if you don't need it, it's better to have the skills and not need them than to need them and can't get them. Because typically two type of people come to me, folks who are seasoned business people. They see that I've walked the walk and I know what I'm talking about. And then people who are like, ah! lost my job and I need to make five, six, seven thousand dollars in 90 days. Can you help me, Glendon Cameron? No, I can't. <laughs> if I had those kind of magic jelly beans, I would be charging 50,000 per. So that's me. That's how I can help you. Now we're going to jump into it. Like I said, this is going to be very, very different. There's going to be a lot of action. And you know, since this is day one, I'm not going to kill you, but it's going to get progressively harder because this thing is designed to make you successful. Now, with day one, we're going to talk about a lot of things that keeps people from starting businesses. Number one is fear. You don't have a talent problem. You have a fear problem. Fear of failure, fear of people talking about you. And I want you to look at the baby, the little girl. And that was once you. You didn't know anything, couldn't do anything, and was totally dependent upon someone for everything that you needed. Then day by day, you became more and more independent. You have to go back to that state of not being you know, dependent, but being fearless. At that age, you didn't know what fear was. You were just like, okay, 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 that didn't work. I'm going to keep doing it. And you just kept going on. You have to give yourself that innocence that you can move forward. Because, and another thing that kills people is they think about the wrong thing. They think about failure. They think about people talking about them. They fear the opinions of other people. That stuff is, is like taking a wand to your battery and this wand drains your battery. You need a fully charged battery to take on each day. Otherwise, you know, it's a struggle. And the biggest struggle you have is the internal one where you're like, do I want to be an entrepreneur? Do I want to be a hustler? Do I want to go to school? You have all of these things and they're pulling at you. And you're just like, ah, what did I do? What did I do? And you're in a state of flux. The state of flux is going to create a problem for you, a big problem. And you have to start peeling down what are your core desires. Essentially, going back to me being laid off that third time I was in a position where all the bullshit was stripped out of my life it was like it's either do this or do that so in the in the really to be fair to you it was easy for me because I was at that point when my back was against the wall and I was I hit rock bottom I mean you know there wasn't a lot of options it was like you need to make something happen or something bad's going to happen to you so when you get to that space it's actually easier to come up but when you're comfortable and all of your wants are being met and your needs are being met. You know, you, you don't have that. Let me really, really elevate my thinking, elevate my game to be even more than I am. But I want you to think about what's holding you back and start punching those fears straight in the face. If it's your husband, mm, 
Now, don't go pop your husband in the face physically, even though you might want to. If it's your wife, don't go pop your wife in the face. But sit down with that person from a position of truth and lay out your game plan. Because if you're married, you got to bring your spouse in. If they're like, no, 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 then you got to do whatever you need to do to keep your household happy and then take whatever time you can to work on your hustle. Because as I said in the video that came up this morning, it took five years for my mom to come around. This is not going to be easy when you're dealing with people who have jobs only. And that's the only way that they understand how to construct income. So typically the beginning is the worst because you're like, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this stuff? Now, this is day one, and then each day is going to be more because I understand from four years of giving webinars that too much information, too long of the webinar, people tend to drone out and miss the notes. So it's going to be quick, easy, and breezy, but we're going to do stuff. The goal is to make 2500 bucks in a week. And you know, like, whoa, 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 Glenn, whoa, 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 you said that was supposed to be in a month. It's uh, in a week. And um, once you get started, you will see that it is really, really, hold on. Okay, really, really easy to do. I know it sounds crazy. I'm using the E word for once. Now, this is the thing, because everyone, a lot of people are in that state of, what do I do? I have this ideal and I have that ideal. So what you're going to do is you're going to start four businesses you know, from scratch for newbies. And if you already have a business, you're going to ball it out of control. Now, let, let's really talk about what is a business, because this is not going to be a situation of, hey, we're going to start an LLC. We're going to print up some business cards. Maybe you're going to go out and look at office space. No, we're not doing that shit. That is stuff that holds you back. What we're going to do in this space is create businesses or product, service, whatever you have, whatever that you want to do, whatever you want to do. And we're going to design it to earn income as quick as possible. That's called validating your business. If you have this ideal and you get together, say, a prototype or you get together the basics of the service, you got to go out and sell that to somebody. And if you can't sell that to somebody, you don't have a business. It's that simple. And once you sell it to someone, then you sell it to someone else and you sell it to someone else, you start to get something very important, which is data, which you can build and go forward with. But if you can't sell, that is a fundamental answer to your quandary if do you have a business or not. Because if you can't sell anything, you don't have a business. And that's not to say your ideal may not be good, it could be a situation of you need to do more training and personal development of yourself. You may have to really, really learn how to be a salesperson. And with that, I'll tell you something. I am a salesperson now. I was not a salesperson when I started. I was that person that would make phone calls and set appointments to keep from going on appointments because I was a scared little bitch of going and talking to someone I never met before and asking them for money. It was terrifying. I'd get on the phone and make all these appointments and I'd go and then another thing that happened when I was a salesperson, if I, someone let me in and they were friendly, I would cling to them like a puppy because it's like, yeah, this is my best friend. No, I'm here to sell you something. I'm not here to be your best friend. I say all that to let you know if you're not a salesperson, if you're not good at it, if you don't understand the sales cycle, these are things that you can learn. You can learn. You can go to YouTube, find your few people that you like their vibe and just watch their videos and go out and put that stuff in practice because I didn't know how to do any of this stuff when I started. I had no clue. It was all Greek, Asian, and Urdu to me. So you can learn. You can learn this stuff. It takes time, commitment, and dedication. So definitely, this, this is that's it. Because the thing is, it's 30 days, but what I've learned is people need to be in the mode of, they got to do something, you know, because it's like, okay, I got all this information. 
It's in my head. The webinar was great. Yeah, I like it and everything. It was cool. But you're not really doing anything with the information. And that's the problem. You got to do something. So this is geared and designed for you're going to do some to for your businesses every day. Every day, you're going to be doing something for your businesses. And I'm going to talk about business profiles. And I'm going to introduce you to some businesses you've never heard of. And I'm going to do one of those today. And it's going to blow your freaking mind. It's going to blow your freaking mind. Some of you are going to try to do that business because I thought about it myself because it's so sweet. But this is the big thing you have to get over. You got to come out of your business shell. Many of you are way smarter than I am. Way smarter than I am. I mean, it is like crazy, crazy. And um, it is amazing. Hold on one second. Okay. I have to check because sometimes, <laughs> you know, the webinar will cut off on me and uh, then I start getting all these emails. But essentially, you got to come out of that fear shell. You really do, because that's your biggest issue. And I know you want to think, oh, it's the economy. Nobody's going to buy anything. I want you to think about something. If you went out of your house today, you pass businesses, right? And in those businesses, there was cars parked in front of them. And there was people going in and out. And wherever you went, all up and down the street, you saw these businesses, unless you live in a desolate area where everything shut it up. And people were buying and doing stuff and going to Target and there's money in the economy. There's money. Don't let anyone tell you, oh, there's no money. No, there's money in the economy, and some of it has your name on it if you're big enough, bold enough to claim it. It's not your life. You know, I grew up product of a single-parent household. It's the, no, it's not that. It's you. It's you and the choices you choose to make. And you start making different choices, you can have a different life. It's not the world. It's not this global stuff. I see people, and there's a, there's a guy, and I'm not going to say his name because some of you know him, and he would just go on, Obama this, Obama this, blah, 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 blah. This went on. Then one day someone said, you know, you really need to just focus on your business. And he's like, you know, you're right. So he stopped with all the rhetoric, and he had the best year ever when he focused on his business versus focusing on things he could not control. I don't know whatever your political affiliation is. I don't get into politics. I think they're all screwing us because they're all friends. After they retire, they're going on duck hunting trips and everything. They're like the best buds. But don't really get so caught up into, well, they're doing this and this. No, no, no. It's not screwing you. And this goes back to something else. If you're living in the United States of America and you understand the rule of law, having a business is the best thing you can do. The tax code, the law code, are all designed for business owners and investors. They're not designed for the average American. You can have an income of $150,000 that's earned income and lose damn near 70 off the cuff. You can have an income from a business of $150,000, write down some stuff, buy some assets, and take home a hundred and something G's and pay hardly any federal tax. Same money, different business structure. Now, before you, someone's like, hey, you know, you, you're talking about no, no incorporation. No, no. That comes later. You want to incorporate off of the money that your business is making. That's what you want to incorporate off of. You don't want to use the cash in your pocket right now to incorporate your business. You want to create that prototype, you want to create that model, and you want to use the money derived from the sales of your validated business to incorporate your business. Because at that point, your business is self-sustaining. Even if it's making 500 bucks a month, it's 500 bucks a month you didn't have before. So you can take that 500 bucks and then print up some business cards, and then get a website, and then incorporate. Because, you know, say you only make five, 800 bucks, you know, that's like 10 G's close. You know, that's between like six to 10 G's. You could take all of that money and invest it in the business and grow it because the business is validated. It's a real business making real cash. So that's one of the things. But the fear, you, you got to work on the fear, the fear of failure, uh, the fear of being rejected. That is the thing that's holding you back more so than anything else. 
<laughs> now, <laughs> someone said they had pen and paper, and I was like, I'm glad you do because you're going to need it. Right now, if you don't have pen and paper, no problem. Go get it. Use your computer. Use Word. Use Pages, whatever you have. And I want you right now, because you you know see that think fast, because that bull, that imagine that bull is the big penis in the sky and it's coming for you. I want you to write down ten business ideas right now. Just start. Go. You got five minutes. Yes, we start the day. That's what I'm saying. This is real different. I'm smiling because I know it's all you like. Whoa, I wasn't wait. Wait a minute. I wasn't wasn't expecting that. Yeah. This this whole thing and like I said, you know, clock is ticking, but I'm gonna keep talking because I'm the one dead space. But 10 business ideas, and it could be anything. Do not censure yourself. Don't, no, don't go well. No, even, you know, something you thought of before, you can put that down. But write down 10 business ideas right now. I don't care if it's dog walking. I don't care if it's throwing snowballs at the devil. Something, write them down. And um, I want you to think, do not censure yourself. Don't go, well, that's stupid. No, write it down. This is to facilitate your creative process. Because there are people like, I don't have ideas. I don't know what to come up with. I want to just be on Amazon and eBay. No, there's so many more things out there that you can do to generate income for yourself and your family. So many things. So many things. And just, you know, write them down. Because what we are trying to do here is create a new paradigm for you. Many of you have heard of me from reselling storage auctions, but I haven't made, I, I do make money from storage auctions because of the knowledge, but I am purely a digital person right now. I make 100% of my income online. I, I really don't push stuff on Craigslist like I used to. Um, it's just, I had to make a decision. You know, it's like, okay, what are we going to do? We're going to take this business to the next level. Or are we going to keep our foot in the resale business? And just for those of you who want resale, my daughter moved in with me recently, and I'm going to teach her how to do Amazon FBA. I'm going to teach her how to do Craigslist. I'm going to teach her how to do eBay. So that's going to be part of this course, and we're going to get that started next week. So for those of you who are really going to like stick with this, it's going to be a lot of real-time information because... It's 2014. I would not do eBay the same way that I did eBay in 2006 and 2014. It makes no sense. There's too many changes, and they've actually made some things worse, and they've actually made some things easier. Craigslist, totally different ball game now. Craigslist has made a lot of changes. I don't know if you've noticed that you can put more information for SEO in your Craigslist ads. Uh, they just did something. I don't, it had to be between Wednesday and Friday. <laughs> I was like, here's another thing. They're making these changes. But once again, we'll talk about that, show you what we're getting, showing what you're selling. Uh, also, I'm going to get her set up with some wholesalers. I'll talk about that whole process of how to get set up with a wholesale. Now, at that point, if you are really going to, you know your business is something you like, you're going to get into it because to get hooked up with wholesalers, you're going to need a business license. You're going to need a res and you're going to need a resale license at the minimum, resale certificate. But a lot of places will not sell to you unless you have the resale certificate, the business license. Some places will require a business card and some places will require a lease. And they'll be on the application form or do you have a storefront or you're selling it online. And there's some places if you're selling online, online, they're not going to sell to you. So, we're going to discuss that. That's why it's 30 days. It's a lot of freaking information and it's just going to come back to you like a little bit at a time. But once once it's all too sexy and shiny and you know tight, it's going to be mind-blowing because my goal is well, for her clock to start is for her to get up to 5,000 a month gross sales in 30 days. Cuz you know the, the title of this is 2500 bucks a month, but really once you get your business ideal together, once you get your marketing together, one, you know, make sure it's validated. You can do twenty five hundred bucks in a week, gross sales. That's what we're going to talk about. See, I told you. For those of you who are like, hey, hey, yeah, this is totally different than anything I've done. Because you know, the, you know, if I put like ten thousand a month, people are like, Bruh, no, 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 oh, that's too much. Do you know scientifically, it's been proven that when a person experiences change that's more than twenty percent, they tend to freak out, whether the change is positive or not. Imagine. Your people that you've gone to their weddings and both the groom and the bride. Ah! 
that's supposed to be positive change, right? They're freaking out. It's like, what? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, five minutes are up. So, <laughs> how did it go? I know for those of you who did it, because some of you didn't do it, but you could do it later. Um, it, it was, it was. Uh, some of you got scared because I know it, I just threw it out at you. That's why I was like, think fast, um, make it happen. You are another thing about this course is it's designed to make you a person of action. There are many people that I've talked to. They're brilliant. Great business plan. They're not people of action. It's just, hmm, well, I don't know. Well, uh, I, will, I will talk to my friend who I helped start her cookie business. She is in the sixth month of her cookie business. She crossed consistently 1,500 gross sales. November was about 1,800. December was close to two. This month, she's uh, January. It kind of went back down to fourteen, and she's already up to a thousand in February because she's doing. She's listening to me. She's you know because there are people at her job. It's like this guy at the NBA is like, well, this is what you need to do, and it's like, ah, screw that. No, forget your LLC. Forget your business cards. Make those damn cookies and sell them. Slang them cookies. Slang them. Cookie slang and have a slang them. And she listened to me and she started, you know, talking to people. I said, go through your Facebook list first. Don't even create a fan page. What you want to do is start the money to come in, which gives you, like I just told you. Then she went, you know, now, you know, she just did her LLC. Now, what did I say? She's been in the cookie business six months. She just did her LLC last month. See what I'm saying? That LLC was funded by the cookies. Now, she has a clear extra G per month, free and clear, to do other stuff with. Business is paying for herself. She's got a job. And I told her, if you continue to do the things that I'm telling you, this cookie business income is going to exceed your job income. And she makes 90 Gs a year. And she was like, I was like, yeah, it's about scale and economy. So that was a simple business started in her kitchen six months ago. She had a few things that didn't go well. She had uh, a few outings. She didn't sell any cookies. It's like, don't worry about it. That happens. Just keep selling. You know, I would go out there to support her, buy some cookies. And around the third month, start clicking, start clicking, start clicking, start clicking. She started making cookies. She started, because the thing is, you have to get your reps in. You have to get your reps in. So those of you who did it, that did those 10 business ideas, one of those business ideas that you just wrote down might make you 100 Gs this year. I know you're going, what? Really? Really? For real? For real? For real? For real? For real? Now, this is what, <laughs> yeah, this is what I want you to do. For those of you who wrote, oh, I know you all hustlers. You all wrote down the 10 ideas. What I want you to do when this webinar is over is to take one ideal and try to sell it to someone today. Yes, today. I'm not kidding. Yes. I don't your goal is to get one sale today. Whatever you wrote down, one. And the thing is, you're going, oh, Glendon, well, the, what I wrote down is going to take. Nope, nope, nope. I, I am not letting you slip out of this. No, no. So you're going to say, well, I have to do pre-sale. You can do a pre-sale. And this, I'll even give you the pitch. It's like, hey, Ed, this is G and uh, I just came with this wonderful ideal and it's just going to be perfect for you. It's not done. So f since it's not done, I'm going to charge a hundred bucks, but since it's not done, I'm going to give you a sweetheart deal for real, for real of $25. So I'm going to do a pre-sale to you of $25. You, that's your goal. Take one of those ideals, whatever is service, whatever you could pre-sell it. And I say, that's another misconception. I've done this several times. You can sell products that you haven't even made yet. You can. You could take the pre-sale money to actually make the product. That's what Kickstarter is. I was doing Kickstarter before Kickstarter came to be. I wrote my first book. I promoted and was selling my first book before it was done. I did that 2009, early 2010. You can do it. So it's just my, it's not, nope, no excuse. Take one of those ideas, put it together, shape it up. If it's a recipe, cook, whatever, and you're going to call up your mama, your daddy, 
Fudo the dog, someone, and you're going to pitch them and you're going to sell them today. Yes, this is this kind of boot camp. We're going to be doing something action oriented every day because when you do this for 30 days, you're going to become accustomed to being an action oriented person. You're going to be like, oh, dang, you're going to start to think differently. You're going to start to see opportunities that have been all around you that you missed because you weren't action oriented. You were just like, oh, you know, whatever, whatever. Rub my belly, drink a beer. No. So <laughs> that's your challenge for the day when this is over. Now, this is the thing that's going to blow your mind. And I got some insight on this one. And this is to help you expand and explore your horizons. You got to change your idea of what the business is. This woman who's a professional cutler does not sleep with them. There is no happy ending. Makes $30 per half hour, $60 per hour, $300 overnight. And she is booked two weeks in advance. She is a cuddle bunny. This business that she started, because, you know, she had a bunch of, she was like doing temp stuff. She was a, a personal, she was a fitness trainer, a personal trainer. She said this business that she created locally in Portland, walking around, handing out flyers, created some business cards. She didn't even do this on the internet until later. Her website isn't even done. She's so busy making money. What did I tell you? You don't have to do the website. You don't have to print the business cards. You have to make money. That's what you got to do. You have to make money. You got to make money. Her website isn't even up and she's been getting exposure in, you know, news media for months. And she's so busy cuddling at $60 per hour that she doesn't even have time to get her website together. I want you to do the math here. She cuddles with, she cuddles four hours a day. That's two forty a day. She cuddles five days a week. That's twelve fifty. If she's got an overnight in there, she could be easily at a uh, six to ten G's a month. And she's got residual income in the cuddle business. She has people who see her two to three times a week. That's right, boys and girls. She's cuddling for dollars, cuddling for dollars. Now, I'm bringing this to you because remember those 10 ideals that I said, don't censure yourself. Who in the room would ever thought that someone could make, you know, let's just say she's making $12.50 a week. That's five, that's $60,000 a year cuddling, cuddling, cuddle, cuddle, cuddle. She ain't working an eight hour day. Say she's real adventurous and she's working an eight-hour day. That's $500 a day. Cuddling. Cuddling. I keep saying that because I, I, I put this in here because I don't want you to censor yourself and go, well, Glendon, that's really a dumb idea. No, you're telling yourself. You could have that ideal that could be the equivalent of this cuddling thing. Do you understand what she's done? And the thing is, she's got to repeat customers. That is key. And she's going to open up a, a storefront, which I actually I think is a little premature because she doesn't really need the storefront because, you know, it's going to be a place where people can come in and cuddle. Uh, I would keep it what she's doing. If I was her business mentor, I would say keep doing what she's doing. Oper operate like a switchboard. I mean, essentially, she needs to model the escort business. No stand for no 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 storefront. Essentially, what she can do is go out, put an ad for other cuddlers, split 50 50 split, and set them up. And at that point, she becomes a booking agent. So she's got 10 cuddler cuddle bunnies out there, right? Making 30 bucks an hour. So that's $300 an hour. Say she has her girls working four hours a day, that's 1200 bucks a day. It's 12 15 G's a month. And she ain't even cuddling. All she's doing is answering the phone. Do you see how this works now? We live in the time that here's this woman who was pretty much failing in life, became a cuddle bunny, and is going probably, when she gets it all together, is going to make mm, six figures. Yes, now here's my insight. 
I am a very touchy feely person and I have an organic, well, not, yeah, I guess organic cuddle buddy that we have an agreement. We're good friends and just there was never enough uh, for us to go that far romantically, but we're real friendly. It's like, you know, I could call her up and like, man, I had a fucked up day. Can I come over? Or you come over here, spend the night, cuddle, no sex. No sex. It's just, it's like rent a wife for me. That's what I call her. I call it my rental wife. And um, and typically, you know, that's the deal. Like if she's got a boyfriend or I got a girlfriend, then that that's off the table. But, you know, when we're both single, it's on. <laughs> so that's why I know this can work. I know it can work. Because if you're honest with yourself, everyone needs human touch. Unless you just become so demonstrably altered bad to bad relationships or a dysfunctional uh, family life. But essentially you can turn anything into a business anything that's why i said don't put any blinders on yourself don't and the part of the course is i'm going to bring even more stuff like this to you there's a lot of esoteric businesses out there there's things that you can do to make money there's things that you can do to really really rock out when i started conundrum publishing then i switched the name to conundrum media because it was more suited for what i do i didn't know what i was doing i wrote that first book and everything that happened after that came because i wrote the first book and i was like okay that doesn't work and this works because when you start and that's what i'm saying forget the business cards forget the incorporation forget all that stuff just get started you're going to learn more about your business than just sitting there and planning. You should plan your business after you get some metrics. After, you know, tonight when you make that pitch like, yo, Ed, yeah, I'm selling these cuddles. Yeah, you know, I got a cuddle business going on. When you do that, you get information that can help you formulate a real business plan. Because I like, I have the saying, most business plans just made off the cuff are like Moby Dick great works of fiction there's just assumptions but when you go out and you actually do the business you're not do you know, there's not so much assumption it's like okay well if i put up x ads on craigslist i get x amount of response you get what's called data that you can make better decisions with at this point it's like okay you do this you get your metrics and you can do a quant and next thing you know you're, you're making forecast and like okay you're real close or you're going a little bit over which lets you know that your information is good and your methodology for handling the information is good and we're going to talk about all that stuff but essentially the first thing that you should do is come up with a business idea validate it by selling it getting some cash getting some ducats getting some dinero getting a little loot in your life that's what you're going to do so what I'm going to do is check out the questions. Let's see. We got hey April, hey DD. Sure thing. Thanks to my. That's a bunch of stuff. Okay, uh, I'll talk about that at the end, Raymond. <laughs> these will yes, these webinars will be at the same time every day, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. I am live. Let's see. There should be audio. I actually see the thing moving and people are still here. So that might be on your end. A week is good for Mark. Okay. Uh, that could be, Shane, that could be on your side. Blow the mind. All right, I'm blowing the mind. All right, Michael's been writing. <laughs> Greg said it was easy. Get up. I got my 10 ideas down. All right. Like t-shirts. All right. Good. Let's see. That's why I'm here. This is from um, Dwayne. Exactly. That's why I'm here. Employed at for 33 years at the same corp. And now things are spiraling down. Not waiting until I'm laid off for the 25th, 21st century buggy whip factory. Pretty much. How do you sell an online product without having it created? Okay, I'm going to stop there and actually tell it to you. What you do is you get a basic cover template and stuff because it's online. So you don't actually need a physical model or anything unless it's something you need a physical model. 
So you go ahead and you get your product and then you find out a group of people that want it or you think want it and you go to them and you go to a small group first and it's like, hey, this is Glendon. I have product X and like you offer it for maybe a dollar or two, some really cheap and then see how many people buy it and then you get feedback from that and then you make it <laughs> and you just sell it because what you do uh, actually have you ever bought a book before it was released go on Amazon it's like yeah the launch date is up that's a pre-sale a lot of businesses do it all the time uh, some people are not getting live feed some people are I wonder what's up with that how much for the replay videos I'll let you know uh huh. Let's see. Okay. Uh, some people are not getting audio, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, my goal, profit twenty. Now this is Richard. Profit twenty five thousand a month. Search art first each day. Call resellers to get them by cheers. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, we had talked about that. He's got a lot of stuff going on. This is Manny. I actually had a Kickstarter page set up, but I never did anything with it because I freaked out. That happens a lot. It happens a lot. <laughs> I told you I knew the cuddling thing. I knew it. I knew it. That's why I put it in there. Uh, April, the cuddling idea is really open my eyes to think further outside the box. I know for a fact because of my color buddy that, and I've had a few over the years because, you know, just to be real, sometimes you want to be with somebody, but you don't want sex. You just want a soothing, comforting person to be with you. And it's real hard to find. I mean, straight up, sex is easy to get. But to get affection and cuddling with someone you really want it from, that's challenging. So I can see why she's book solid. Easy. Uh, this is from Chris. I get disability from the military plus blah, blah, blah. When should I incorporate? I will lose some benefits when I earn income. Actually, I got three friends who own medical disability and they have, one of them has a $120,000 job. And he still gets all his benefits. Talk to your, the people who are giving your benefits because none of them have lost anything and they all have jobs. Uh, okay. On um, when should you incorporate? I think I answered that. Get whatever you're doing, start making some money and see if that idea is worth incorporating. And then use the money that you make from the ideal to incorporate. Uh, Tamara, is social media a good place to get started selling? Yes, it is. Bingo. Good example. Same as your dollar and chance you used to get us interested in being here to death. <laughs> Proof of concept. <laughs> actually, yeah, that actually brought some people here. That's funny. Uh, Greg, thanks to UG, I started my mission in April 2013. Vicus Micro J sites, cool. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about that, and I'm going to answer the questions because essentially another thing is to try to keep these at an hour because I've done enough webinars. I know that people start to tune out, get tired if they have kids. It's like mommy, daddy. So I'm not going to keep you forever. Let's see. Uh, this is from Jelini. I have three books that are in various stages of completion. Can I sell some of the finished chapters in advance? This is what you do with that. You start a blog. You start putting a chapter and split up into several blog posts. Then you develop a readership. And when people start like, hey, I like it, then you add a little bit more, add a little bit more. You can put the whole book on a blog. And I'm going to tell you how it works. And you know, they can read it. But see, this is the thing. When someone goes to a web page and there's blog posts, very few people are going to have the term and need to sit there and read the whole thing. You can tell them the whole book's on the blog and 99.8% of the people won't read it. But then you package it off in a book, make it clean and easy to handle. Then you can sell the same information to them that you gave for free. Crazy, I know, but I've done it. Uh, this is Gandalf. How do you avoid being diffused and focused on just one ideal? I seem to always fall into the multitasking and jack all trade traps. Create a daily task list. Six things and do number one, then two, then three, then four. You know, you can still do a lot and it gives you way more focus. I don't, I have never read a book on internet marketing yet. I, I need to. That's on my list of things to do. I can't make any recommendations. 
<laughs> this is great. You told me to write down everything I can do on paper and that shit. Where it does. This is proven. Writing your goals down increases the chances of them happening like a thousand percent. The simple act of writing them down it makes you more accountable. Okay, uh, this is from Dwayne. For those of us working one, two, or three jobs, how do we choose what to ask and what to focus on when the wolf is at the door? Now, could it sell some wolf pets? That wouldn't be so bad. All right, number one, I'm going to give you a, a triage. Which job gives you the most money? That's one that you keep. Then whatever, you know, you go with the one that gives you the most money, I guess maybe the one that's easy. You know, I don't know your situation, but say one job's like an hour to get to, but it gives you the most money. But if you got rid of that job and kept the other two, you wouldn't be traveling an hour. Then you have to factor in how much did you spend for gas? Because like a lot of people don't actually know the true cost of their car. Like they say, you know, my car payment's four fifty. No, it isn't. Your car payment is four fifty plus the insurance says a hundred bucks. That's five fifty plus maybe you know X amount of maintenance. So your car payments. A lot of people who have a decent car, their car payments like six to nine hundred bucks a month when you include the gas, the maintenance, and the insurance. But they just look at the actual payment to the finance company. Everything is part of your car payment, so you got to do that kind of analysis. Uh, Jennifer, what if you don't have a product to sell, but instead you have information? Didn't you see Wall Street, Gordon Gecko? Information is some of the most valuable commodity that we know of. That's a product. <laughs> I'm making money off shit I haven't done since 1993. I'm telling you, this new NLF light star is great. Uh, this is James. When do you start to look for help if you're a small business? When you're working 80 hours a week and you still can't get it done. Okay, uh, this is tomorrow. One more thing. I want to go into a plus size clothing biz selling before I made a serious issue about this. Now I'm laughing because James actually made a post today in the group and he talked about this. Plus size clothing is a hot business to be in. If you're sexy and cute with it, it even gets hotter. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know, right? I know, right? That's funny. If you've been doing, um, all right, this is Chris, doing the storage auction thing full time since December 2004. Um, what's killing me is the truck rentals. When do you think I should get my own truck? Um, you really haven't been doing it that long. You're in the midst of tax season too, so that can be a little rough. If you're full time and you don't have a job, I would say trade your car in and get yourself a box truck ASAP. And then you, you, since you get the efficiency of the, having the box truck and try to get some that, you know, it's even, and you're not paying, making big payments and then later on get the car again. Yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, James, last month I made $600 on big girl clothing. So it's a valid concept. Okay. So, uh, we're at 448, bunch of questions answered. Not going to keep everybody for here forever and ever. And this is the deal. Because I knew people would want it. I'm doing this. I'm going to create a special tab in the Hustler Mindset Project, the online video, and the recorded sessions and the special Q and A's and stuff will be there. So there's going to be two options: one ninety nine for the you know forever, and then whatever else I put in there, you'll get that. And then uh, there's a monthly plan that I will send out to. You'll get links to this stuff once the webinar is over, and it'll be. 29 yeah 29.99 per month so there's a monthly session and then and see this is the reason i'm doing it like this if you do what i'm telling you to do and you're really earnest about it paying for this is going to be nothing and also this is the deal because after the first week the price of all this stuff is going up. I mean, this is just a 24 hour because tomorrow's is going to be great content and it's going to be more. And then for the people who buy the recorded sessions, there's going to be special webinars. I may do like the four o'clock webinar and then I'll do maybe a nine o'clock webinar that night. It's, you know, so it's definitely going to be different. But everyone will get that. Uh, I love my car. You're killing me. All right. I'm, I'm going to put this serious question to you. What's more important, your car or your business? Don't take too long to answer because if you treat your business right, your business will treat you right. 
And a car, you know, a nice car is just nothing. I mean, all right, I'm going to tell you a really crazy story. I like really smart women. So a lot of the women I date tend to be doctors, engineers, and stuff. I picked up a doctor, a physician, in my Isuzu NPR. Helped her up in. We went out to a restaurant, parked all the way in the back, took her home, and my truck was parked in her cul-de-sac. So do what you can, playboy. It <laughs> <laughs> That's, Dwayne says a thousand dollar car would get you to work just fine dump the car yep 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 okay so I'll uh, you know if y'all want me to stay to five I'll stay and answer questions but essentially everyone that attended you will get an email with the links to this stuff and then you can jump in and also tomorrow at 4pm I'll be here again with another section of this uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff because I know that cuddling thing is blowing people's mind. It didn't blow my mind. I actually saw it as a viable business ideal and there's a way you can actually scale it. Uh, her problem, she's going to run into the situation that Airbnb is running into with certain government regulations about hotels and stuff. But she'll be able to get past it because I think it's an awesome ideal. It's an awesome idea. <laughs> Manny's going to Seattle. I, I, I you know she's. This could be be really interesting. Greg's talking about putting up the color ad. I, I know for a fact, Corey Brown, uh, the coloring thing is very big in Japan because they're not having sex in Japan. So that that is the really, really interesting how uh, this thing's going. And there's a lot of stuff that I haven't really talked about on YouTube. You know, I was, you know, I'm not recommending this one because it, it can weird you out, but the unit I found where the girl was storing all her panties and I got in the panty business. Selling, selling dirty panties for 150 bucks. People, there was this one guy, he was a regular. Every week, 150. I mean, it got to the point we started getting him two and three pair of panties. It was ridiculous. Seattle needs some cuddling. That's funny. Uh, this is from Dwayne. Can you briefly talk about motivation? Keeping the batteries charged with when do 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 that just keeps happening so you can stay on top of the wave instead of under it i want to give you a few things that i do um number one and it may cost you some money it may not learn to meditate transcendental meditation uh, find the course take it it's worth every penny if you have to pay for it two keep negative people out of your life even if they're family members they can't be around you if you've got someone that Every time you tell them, you're like, mm, I don't get rid of them. I mean, you know, you can still go to the barbecue and Christmas, whatever, but they can't be around you daily because they'll weigh you down. Two, write down your goals, write down your goals, write down your goals, and look at them every day. Then take your top five or six goals, put them in your wallet in a place that every time you go in there, you have to look at them. You have to keep your goals in front of you at all times because, like you said, doo doo, life, that stuff, it just keeps coming. And the thing is, many of you who are taking this course will experience some strange energy because as you start to shift how you think, you're going to alter how people perceive you and treat you. Some of the people are going to treat you like, wow, I didn't know you had this in you. And some are going to lose it. Some are going to treat some are going to be jealous of shit. And that's actually law 24 in the book, the 50 laws of hustling. And that's something else. Uh, everyone that signs up. You also get the 50 laws of hustling when it's done. And you just got to really, really focus on getting through that day and look at the process. Because, you know, people talk about, you know, stuff I put on YouTube that I'm like a very motivational speaker and everything. I don't consider myself a motivational speaker. These are the things that I use to keep myself up because just like you, I have crazy stuff that happens to me too. I mean, I had a situation a few months ago. It was just insane. And you know, I woke up, I meditated, and I started writing. And also, this is something else. Find out what is your power hours. I'm a morning person. If I get up at 6 and work for 4 or 5 hours, I get a lot of stuff done. If I try to work after 3, I can get it done, but I'm done around 11. It's kind of crazy. So, you know, work on your, your biorhythms. <laughs> this is done. Do you think information would work on my business? I want to do graphic designs. Yes. It just depends on how you present it. 
Damn, I, this is Jelani. I have a registered offshore corporate lotion along with digital gold accounts and active Bitcoin wallets. I like to leverage the benefits of the offshore company to clients. You got to go out there and start talking to people. Uh, this is eerie. Are you going to go into sourcing from China, such as your front of connection that you've spoken about before? I will actually talk about the whole wholesale process, and I'll even talk about stuff that I did creating a company just to get shit for myself at wholesale. Some people disagree with that, but uh, it worked for me. Treat you different like, this is from Dwayne, treat you different like when you stop drinking and your drinking buddies don't understand you and you don't understand. Exactly. Yeah, that's going to happen. Uh, Troy, use smartphone screensaver for goals, i.e. pictures of sands. That's an idea. Alibaba is the shit. Yep, you can have products made. We'll talk about that. Okay, it's 4.55. Um, if there's any more questions, I'll answer them. Well, I will be shutting this down at 5. And that's something else. Uh, I'll start early, but I'm going to shut this thing down pretty much at 5 every day because it's going to be every day and it's going to be a lot of information. And there will be some days I'll be doing this twice. So... Glendon, you're preaching the truth, man. What are you willing to pay for your dreams? My marriage ended because she does not believe what I'm doing. This is an important question. What price are you willing to pay? It is. It's very. This is Eddie. Sure, Eddie. Thank you for showing up. I appreciate it. I feel like today was a great turnout. And uh, this is going to get really, really interesting as we go along. Because this, this, you thought the cuddling thing was funny. Wait till you see what else is coming. <laughs> And I'm having fun. I really enjoy this because I've always loved business. I've had a subscription to Ink Magazine since I was like 12 years old in high school. And just that whole process. And just so many things that you can do now to make money. It's ridiculous. It is just totally, totally ridiculous. So that's the deal. All right. So I uh, just want to say thanks to everyone. Hold on. Uh, yes, you can use your existing company item get items wholesale. Depends though on how it's coded. Now get to work, people. <laughs> All right, Dwayne, see you tomorrow. Oh, uh, for Hustler University members, yeah, you this you're gonna get the recorded stuff already. Yeah, you're straight on that. And you were already gonna get the enhanced stuff anyway. Uh, Mike, what happened to your video about paid channels? Uh, briefly, I looked at it and I didn't like the payout distribution between myself and AdSense. It was 55 45 and the 14 day free trial. And it was just a lot of things that was like, mm, I'm not going to do this stuff on that channel. I'm going to do something else. Tamara, thanks, Glendon. Powerful day. All right, thanks for coming in. Holler. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think that's Matu, I believe. Validate me. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, I uh, wish everyone a great Sunday. And uh, once again, I will be here tomorrow. Um, to make sure, you have to go back to the link. And I'll, I'll send out the email because everybody should be on the email list. And I'll just send out the link and let you know about the session for tomorrow. All right, with that, I'll see everyone on the good side. session and this call